Welcome everyone, I'm Kathy Ballinger, Managing Director of York County Community Foundation's Embracing Aging, where we are passionate about creating a York County that is inclusive and respectful of all generations. Over 110 years ago, a woman named Anna Gardner gifted her estate to be used to assure that residents of York County can have the best quality of life possible as they age, and we are honored to carry on her legacy. You see, sometimes negative thinking gets in the way of having the best quality of life possible mm. as we age. It can threaten how we live and where we live in our community. It can impact our job options. It can influence the amount of health care we receive or the type of health care that we receive. It can also keep our community from creating policies that um, work for all ages. And we wanna do something about that. So we've been working to hold a series of online sessions where we're talking about aging. And today's session is one that I'm very excited for. It's called Let's Talk Aging. And instead of having one guest, we have many guests here today who have ideas that they would like to share or questions that they would like to ask, all designed around helping your county become a great place for us to grow older. If you'd like to learn more about our work, please visit us at embracingaging.org. And if you're on social media, Facebook, please follow us at YCCF Embracing Aging. So welcome everyone and thank you for being here today to talk aging. So we're, I'm really excited to hear your ideas, your questions, your concerns about aging here in York County, and more importantly, how we can use this information to help inform the work that we do to make York County a better place, a more age-friendly place for all of us. So I did send out some questions to help inspire our thinking, but I'm gonna start with a very open-ended one. Does anyone today have ideas that you'd like to share? And just to let everyone know, it's gonna be a little hard on Zoom to do this, but you can either share by unmuting yourself and then uh, say, saying your idea, or if you would like, you can also put them in the chat box. And I also wanna give a big, huge shout out to my colleague, Roth Prep, who is helping me today uh, with managing the chat box, as well as uh, just making certain everyone is, is in. And um, so let's get started. Who has an idea that you'd like to share to help make your county more age-friendly? All right, I thought that we might have some shyness around it, so let me ask them more specific question. Oh, we have one, David. I'm, I'm not sure I have. I'm not sure I have an idea, but um, just a um, just an expression of what's going on currently, um, you know, climate-wise, which might set. Um, up an opportunity for us to to think about this in a larger perspective, and that is the you know the the unrest in society within you know within all of our counties within all of our areas and neighborhoods. Um, I'm thinking that we have to have a, a better lens for how to be a more inclusive, um, community driven um, yeah, response, having community driven responses while we're addressing those types of equity factors. Um, and then also recognizing the fact that COVID-19, given the vaccine rollout, probably isn't going away for quite a while. So how do we create maybe more connectivity within our communities for everybody? And that might mean uh, connecting to parks and open spaces and how to get, get it connected to a more vibrant uh, downtown or um, you know, central area where people gather. So thank you, David. And there's two things that I heard in that. So the first is how can we get a better lens on including people and, and hearing uh, all sorts of different perspectives? And the second is, you know, how can we uh, connect and, and uh, leverage all the wonderful things that are happening in the community? Any thoughts around either one of those topics? I think one thing that's difficult is um, we can have places where they can go, but will they go? Because I think people are so, um, if the doctor's not telling them to stay home, somebody else is, or they feel they need to. But I agree with that. Wouldn't it be great to have an opportunity to 
go somewhere downtown. Heidelberg Church is a great place to congregate. Uh, and they're open, good space. I'm not sure, unfortunately, many people, um, especially the ones who need to come. But he's right, you know, we're not, um, we're losing people. And because there's no connection, places are losing people. Churches are not expecting them to come back. So how might we address that? Joan? Um, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on the idea of communication and connectivity. I think we're moving so rapidly into being uh, reliant on the internet and email. And just recently with the rollout of some of the vaccine at Wellspan, uh, if you had a My Wellspan account and could jump on that, you could get a spot. <laughs> Uh, but if you weren't in that orbit or you didn't have a friend that emailed you and said, boy, the vaccines are here, um, you were really pretty out of luck. And mm -hmm. I think that that's really going to be a challenge to how do we communicate timely and effectively when not everyone is in the Internet world. Very good point. Thank you. Kind of to go on to two different comments, both from Margaret and Joan. So I think safety needs to be taken into account and not just COVID safety, but just generally community safety. So I think that if we could somehow address that, that would certainly increase aging. Um, and the other piece in terms of the, the internet connectivity, I, I think when we think about some of our rural seniors, our rural seniors really struggle because the, the internet, even if they have the access to the equipment, the bandwidth is a major factor. Thank you, Sherry. I have a question. Go ahead, Lopa. Yeah, um, we have a natural concentration of um, uh, aged population or senior population, whatever is the politically correct term, in our, uh, say, in the churches, through the churches, the assisted livings and the nursing homes. Not everybody is totally, um, uh, there are many people in there who would like to do stuff. And again, I think the uh, you have a, a concentration there. So if we run a pilot with just, say, one or two of the churches that you have access to, uh, a handful of seniors, and again, run it with them. And again, any of the assisted livings, there are many people who, elders, who, are, who still would like to work it towards this um, type of a project. I've seen your centers once they, once, or if they are open, any of them. What an opportunity they could do a Zoom and keep up with wise. I'm not so sure that you're open. So I, I'm not sure, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, and Lisa, I'm not sure if you might recall this or not. I know that over the summer of 2020, uh, York, uh, County Economic Alliance had done a study and they had a sense of how much of York County was without connectivity to internet. And they were starting to put plans in place to address that. Lisa, do you know anything more about where we are with that? Uh, yes, I, and ironically, I just spoke to Silas Chamberlain yesterday. Um, they are um, starting to work on that, but that is a multi-year project. And I think the number was uh, as much as 35% of the county does not have consistent um, internet access. There, there are, uh, there's um, some meetings that have started with MedEd. So there is a process of working towards solutions, uh, but it will take time. Is that 30% people that don't have the equipment or people that because they're in a location that internet connectivity is poor or both? You know, Sherry, that's a great question. I don't really recall the answer. I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, it's fine. There are many people who are just afraid of the computer. I know people who are about 
maybe my age or not, they just said, no, 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 I pay cash. I don't do anything oh, yeah. with it. So again, I think it's not just the connectivity and the, that. I think it's a, it's a culture. Bringing so everyone, the I, I see we have two people who have their hands up. So I want to uh, let them have a chance to speak. So we'll start with Stephanie and then go to Allison. And uh, that's a real good idea. If we can do that, maybe that'll help too with people who uh, want to respond. So Stephanie? Yes, good morning. And I was uh, going back to David's comment about the whole connectivity and where that conversation is led. And I do agree with Lo uh, that some of that is cultural, that I'm, I just don't want anything to do with that. And they may not have the equipment. A lot of our uh, aging, a lot of us who are aging have cell phones. And most of these cell phones are smartphones. So most of the same capabilities you can do on your cell phone. And it, I think some of it has to do with the right motivation. And my mom, who lives with me, um, just seeing me interact with my family, when I opened up Facebook and showed her her sisters and brothers who live in South Carolina, you know, she wanted to be able to see pictures of them, her great nieces and nephews and all of that. So sometimes it's motivation. And I know family is very important. So if you can start with basics, sending a text message to a family member and walking them through that process, you know, like I did with my mom, she's not one to jump on a technology all the time, but she knows it's available. If she's missing her granddaughter, she picks up the phone and calls her, but she can also send a text. She can look on Facebook and see pictures. Um, her past senior center started Zoom Bingo. She did have a laptop, which she had never used, but she had one because she thought that she needed one. So she bought one. So setting that up for her and and, and her getting on Zoom bingo with her seniors and connecting in that way. So I think a lot of it has to do with the right uh, motivations, the level of interest. They may not jump in right away and do major things, but everybody wants to see pictures of their family, you know, and, and the little babies and the loved ones. So I think with that motivation and the support to walk them through, because it's a fear of, 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 of not getting it Right. I had an uncle who recently purchased a home in South Carolina and he needed one document before closing that I wanted to help him go online and get. He drove from South Carolina all the way to Philadelphia rather than go online and retrieve that document because that culture, that age of used to handling things in person. So it's it's, it's getting past some of that and they don't want to be a part of it. But I find that he'll come on Facebook and like stuff and see. So you got to kind of meet them where they are with, with, with this whole technology. But I think moving forward, it is very important that those that we connect that and whatever that means is that we stay connected through the telephone, through the Facebook, through Zoom, whatever those mechanisms are. And also old fashioned sending cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They love receiving mail and cards and making cards and stamps available to them so that they can then send them as well. Right. So that's what, what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Allison and then Charlotte. Hi, everyone. Um, so I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't mention the need for dementia care services. Um, and, you know, there is a grassroots effort already happening with the Dementia Friends. That's, you know, an easy um, program to share if, if people know about it. I think that's been the, uh, you know, just getting the word out and the opportunities available that people can participate. Um, and I mean, right now those things are happening, happening through technology virtually, but, you know, they are meant to be in person and they're made to be anywhere and for anyone. Um, and then also, you know, just affordable services and resources. Um, you know, we've been involved with the Alpha program and just the shortage of personal care beds for folks who can't afford the more expensive, you know, because there's not government funding or a lot of government funding for those folks. So there's a big void um, that people are not safe maybe at home and don't have the family there to help assist them. And 
um, but there's not, they may have to go three, four hours away to a county that has those beds available because York County is just really um, struggling with having facilities that offer those lower income beds. Um, so those are my two concerns. Thank you, Allison. Charlotte. Good morning. Um, the issue I wanted to raise is that I currently work with three different individuals that have visual impairment, macular degeneration. And so they have computers, they have connectivity, but it's very difficult for them to function and maneuver because they cannot see well. And so that's just another aspect of aging that um, I think we have to be aware of that people are not able to see well. And um, so printed materials, things on the internet need to be much larger than they are. And also are there services or people that can come alongside individuals to help them when they cannot see? Thank you, Charlotte. And are you working uh, specifically with uh, an sp uh, organization to help with that? No, the, these are just individuals that we know. Okay. Because there's also, um, it was Vision Corps, I'm not, uh, in, in York County, uh, I'm not sure. I think they have a different name now, uh, but that they, they can help. They can come out and, and assess and help with like uh, technology. Okay. Help with For, that. Foresight Vision. Kathy. Foresight vision. I knew I didn't have it right. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, Please, thank you. Your hand is up. I just lowered it. Oh. I was going to share the same information. It's a great resource and, um, and uh, it can be very cost effective as well. Yes, thank you. So I'm hearing a theme about connectivity and engagement, and we know that that is so important to continuing to have purpose. And that is such a key element to one's quality of aging. So, so let's just uh, talk a little bit more about ways that we can help connect and uh, you know, help people um, find out and learn about things in the community? What are some other ideas that people have? One thing that um, I, I thought was interesting is something Lopa brought up, which is um, how do you incentivize people to get engaged who would benefit from being engaged? So it's not so much lack of access at so much as um, lack of comfort in reaching out and engaging in something new. Yes, that is a very important point. I'm, I'm reading the chat as, as we're talking to, uh, to follow up on that. Um, so I just wanna, as, as we go, before we go to Lisa's question, um, just to make everyone aware and see what's in the chat, Jenna had indicated that she agrees with LOPA and they're trying to help many seniors at their senior center. They're sort of eventually able to connect with the technology. Um, we have Lori saying there's a need for continued education and to support that fear. Senior centers have been working with seniors uh, on accessing technology. So addressing that fear, but let's get to um, um, what Lopa and Lisa have been saying. I, you know, I know older adults who don't have a comfort in stepping out and doing something, uh, even when it's right across the street and available to them. So how might we get people to, um, I don't know, want to maybe try something different or or experience something uh, different? How, how might we, we do that collectively as a community? Um, I, in 2017, Kathy, obviously you know about this project. We did a Live Fully, Travel Safely project and it was funded by the Community Foundation. So one of the things that happened during the process of that is we created a video where we utilize seniors from um, different senior centers and we had one individual who was very 
active. She, she would take her dog for a walk. She had a smartphone. So she was a very active teenage, a teenager, senior. <laughs> and she, she really intrigued me because she was all of those things and yet did not step into the world of transportation. And so we, we did use her as one of our cast for this video and she learned about our service and then she had a medical crisis and now she was very comfortable because she had that opportunity to work with the organization wow. so i say all of that to say you know she probably would not have been open to that idea had she not had that level of interaction with us during the making of that video so if we could find a way to get people really integrated in the organizations with the services that we provide. I think that that would, maybe it's through exposure, maybe it's through helping them feel ownership for those projects and, and organizations. But she sticks with me because, you know, she is now back to driving. She, she just had a medical situation, but I, I find it interesting that, that she was, and then she became a voice for our services. Not only she used it, but she helped to recruit other people to use our service as well. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing that example, that story. Allison, I see your hand is up. Yeah, you know, I, I, I hear everybody talking and it just makes me think, um, you know, a lot of these things, you know, that's what the senior centers are trying to do and trying to accomplish. Um, you know, they've tried to incentivize some of the education and the technology and the different programs by having, you know, really affordable meals to try to draw people in. Um, you know, and they've they've struggled with attendance um, to get people there. So incentivizing, yes, but I think also, you know, it goes back to the accessibility. If you look at our East York. Um, Geography, I mean, there, there is very little available for those folks in East York. They would have to come downtown and let's face it, given you know the, the senior population living in East York, would I rather cross the river or go downtown? You know, I'd be hard pressed to choose either one. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a weird place, that East York area, but there's very few resources in, in that area for them. Um, you know, adult day centers, that, that's a missing piece in York County as well. Um, but, you know, how do we get people to go to those things? I think a lot of it comes back to how can we help people understand that this, these things would help with a positive aging experience? Um, because I think, you know, Sherry's example is a perfect example. When they're comfortable with where they are, they're comfortable in their skin, then, you know, they'll, they'll come out for some of these programs. But, you know, a lot of our, our aging folks become very isolated and withdrawn, um, I, I think, because they're not necessarily comfortable as, as they age. So, you know, I don't know that that really helps with figuring out the how to fix it. But, um, you know, I think looking at where the voids are, hearing from more of our seniors from their mouths, I think, um, you know, because I can see what I observe, but I'm not living it every day. So, you know, how, how do we engage more of those seniors, I think, becomes the question. Thank you, Allison. And boy, our time is flying by. <laughs> it's going by so quickly. Um, trying to, to I, I so appreciate everybody typing things into the chat, trying to, to keep up with that and also uh, hearing your, your thoughts that you wanna share vocally. Um, Jen had said maybe recruitment by peers, those who are comfortable and taking advantage of local services might reach out to neighbors and family members and invite them to come along. And, and I think, you know, I see some heads shaking uh, that that is definitely uh, a, a good way to get people involved. Um, I know that, as I said, we're, we're approaching the end of our time together. And so we know connectivity and helping people stay engaged is an important theme. But I, is, are there any other important themes that people wanted to talk about or ideas or, or things that you want Embracing Aging to be made aware of uh, as we work on ending our call? 
So I'm seeing about scammed resources, making certain that people are aware of scams that are out there through AARP. Are there other things that are top of mind? Kathy? Yes? Well, something that just came to me is, is developing, and, and you guys, obviously these forums have been good for that, but a way for us to get the message out of the programs that we are doing. Like I was just thinking Jen and I, uh, Ali and, and, and some of the other centers are all doing these virtual programs. And yeah, we've had people jumping on, but um, you know, I think it would help for us to get the support of the community to um, market those programs, help us to market those programs and get the word out to people. So I think that would be definitely beneficial if we could have that network that could help us to market what we are doing. So thank you. That's a that's a, a great idea. And Lori also I had typed a similar idea into the chat. And I'm very excited to say that a resource hub is part of a um, new online platform that Embracing Aging is working to develop that will roll out in January of 2022. And that can certainly be a common place where we can be putting all of this programming, but that's almost a year away. So we need to uh, figure out how to do it uh, in the meantime. So um, on our new webpage, we do have events at the bottom of the page. And if there are events that align with serving older adults, um, if you would like, we could try to explore the possibility of putting those events or at least those classes or a connection to them on uh, our website um, to help get the word out. But the, also exploring, you know, how might we all work together to maximize that communication is great. Other thoughts or ideas? So I um, have a question here. How do we take engagement to folks in their homes? So good, good perspective, Amy. Amy is saying, hey, let's kind of switch this a little bit instead of having people maybe who aren't um, comfortable going outside their home, how can we engage with them in their homes? So that is also something that we need to be thinking about uh, to help people stay engaged. Charlotte, do I see your hands up? No. Okay, that was my cursor. Uh, Ellen, yes. I'm sorry, Ellen, we can't hear you. Can you try again? Ellen, we can't hear you. <laughs> Can you type it in the chat box for us? Oh my goodness, everyone. Um, so let me ask a, a couple of, of questions then, and maybe you can do a thumbs up or something so we can kind of gauge. Was having a open conversation like this helpful today? Did, I know it went by quickly, but was it what you were thinking it could be, or would you like to see maybe something more structured? So first of all, first question was today, uh, what you were thinking it was going to be, having this open forum, was it something helpful? If so, could you put your thumbs up so we could see? Okay. Put my thumbs up, it's Marjorie. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And how can we build on this? Would you like to see more sessions like this, maybe around a one topic so that we might be able to collaborate, maybe go a little deeper in our ideas and, and our collaborations around this? Would that be helpful? Can I see yeah. any thumbs or people nodding? That thumbs up. Thumbs up to that. Okay. All right. Just trying to get a sense here as, as we, we move forward. So we, as you, those of you who have been engaged in some of these sessions, we started these in the middle of September. We've been uh, hosting two a month. And uh, as we roll out for the rest of this year, we're just trying to make certain that we're providing content that's going to help us all and uh, really be what the community needs and wants uh, to make your county a better place to grow older. So, wow, um, Roth, you're capturing the chat for me? 
Okay, so Ross capturing the chat. We have this recorded. I'm going to go back and digest everything. I am so appreciative of you joining us today. We know that uh, your time is very valuable. There's so many Zoom calls and for you to carve out time to be with us and talk about this very important topic um, is, is really means a lot to us. Um, so we'll get this out to you. Look, check out our calendar for future events. And everyone, thank you. Make it a great day. Bye-bye.